Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show. This morning, we're going to bring Tal to light on Wednesday, the 8th of May. And you want to find out exactly what that means? Well, this morning, I have a parent caregiver and executive member of the Society for Inherited and Severe Blood Disorders of Trinidad and Tobago Limited, Mr. Jason Braffitt, who joins us via Zoom. And I also have executive member of the same, um, Mr. Kieran Blackburn, who joins us in studio. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Morning, morning. Thanks Good morning. Us. Thanks for having us. How are you guys doing this morning? How are you doing this morning, Kieran? Great, I'm great. And you, and you, Jason? Yes. We're good. Excellent. All right, so I mentioned bring Tal to life, right? But we're talking about uh, thalassemia. Now, May 8th is World Thalassemia Day. And Jason, I understand that you can, you can best describe this for me. Exactly what is thalassemia? All right, thanks, uh, uh, Ruckus. Uh, thalassemia is an uh, inherited blood disorder um, that a person who lives with the condition um, actually acquires it through their parents. Uh, once you have two parents, um, two persons, male and female, who are carriers of the 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 disease, um, and they procreate, you can have the possibility of having a child with a major form of the condition, a intermediate form, or a trait, or nothing at all. Um, but digging a little deeper, thalassemia is. Uh, defective gene, basically. One of the genes is responsible for our hemoglobin, which we know as our blood count, which is also the part of the blood that carries oxygen um, about the body to all of the organs. That is the defective gene. Um, and obviously, persons who have uh, that condition, they have many health challenges, um, including the the body doesn't have the ability to produce enough blood to sustain life. It doesn't have the capacity to effectively um, circulate oxygen about the body. Um, so what happens with persons of with, with, with the condition? You have to have frequent blood transfusions. And when I say frequent, um, every two weeks to basically stay alive. Uh, and with that comes the possibility of getting iron overload because we all know blood um, comes with a lot of iron in it as it as a product itself. And therefore, that individual would have to also have iron chelation, which is taking medication in various forms to rid your body of that excess iron. Um, but Obviously, over the over years of, of being alive and, and, and using those medications and getting those transfusions, you develop several complications that um, definitely threaten your life and um, affects your quality of life as well. Well, I, I was about to say that sounds like the quality of life is affected from jump. Mm -hmm. um, but is there, uh, let, me, let me come across to you, Kiran. Uh, is there a way that it can be cured or is there any sort of cure for this? It, the... the, the... Oh, the only real cure, well, there are a couple of cures, but um, it's either to have a bone marrow transplant, right. which um, Jason is trying to raise funds for his daughter, mm -hmm. right? And the other option is um, what we call now gene therapy, which is new, is effective, but quite expensive. Of course. Right? Um, so th th those are the only known, known cures. Yeah. Um, but is there a possibility that you, you get accustomed to it? I mean, Jason mentioned uh, that you would get further complications with all the treatments and all that stuff as you continue to go. Um, so then what, what is the expected lifespan of somebody living with thalassemia? Well, 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 as we know, modern, modern medicine has improved tremendously over time, right? So persons are living a bit longer, but the, the, the challenges of, of, of living life Especially in a country like ours, where blood supply is short, yeah. where, where you don't know if, you, if if you're going to get blood, uh, because I mean we, we have patients here who they they're supposed to be surviving on blood, and as Jason mentioned, every two weeks they should get blood, but sometimes they only get blood once a month, or then sometimes even then they they waiting for the hospital to say, well well we don't have it now, come come tomorrow, come next week, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes they go spend half a day in the hospital. And still not, and they, they're not able to get the blood because the blood is not a match, or you know several other reasons, right? Mm -hmm. So, those those create tremendous challenges, and especially for working people. Oh yeah. Right? So um, well, I mean, Jason, I, I understand. Kieran mentioned that your daughter uh, has this this disorder, 
And I'm really curious as to, you know, in terms of getting the, the blood transfusions on time, how has that process been for you? Well, I, um, what I can say um, in, in, in recent times, uh, I mean, from last year especially, um, we would have noticed a marked improvement in, in, in getting uh, um, what I would want to say some amount of blood, but she's not been able to get her full volume of blood that she should have been getting um, to, to, because what, what, you know, in, in layman's term, what you're doing with giving the body blood, you're tricking it to believe that it's, um, it's normal and it's, mm -hmm. it has enough blood to function and therefore organs and, and your bones and everything that could go um, hair wire kind of stays intact. So when you don't get enough blood, so she's been getting some amount of blood and, and we are thankful for all of the donors who would have donated over the years. Mm -hmm. um, she's not getting enough because we don't necessarily have a culture here in Trinidad of donating blood on a regular basis, non-renumerated non donations actually, on a regular basis. So the blood mm -hmm. bank, the um, it, it's woefully... Um, out of stock most times uh, for you know and and worse yet if you have uh, a blood you know a rare but you know o negative or or one of those rare blood types um it's it's even more challenging for our patients mm -hmm. tell me something jason yeah. how common how common is this disorder internationally so it it it, it falls under one of the what they quote rare diseases but 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 by and large, um, you know, it, it depends on the region of the world, right? So mm -hmm. this condition um, is predominantly in parts of Asia, parts of Africa. Um, so so you know, I would want to bring it back home to Trinidad, and we estimate based on our community and what we've seen over the last forty years, it's about one in 15 persons in Trinidad live with wow. the trait, at least the trait, right? Um, and that and that number could vary, but, you know, we really don't have enough statistics yeah. um, to stand on because there are no um, statistics collected um, countrywide on, on yeah. this. But based on our community, we believe it's between one in 10 to one in 15 persons that have the trait. So it's quite significant. Yeah, it's that, that's a lot of people, um, but at least having the trait, but they may not all need the blood transfusions as often and all that stuff, right? And that is and that and that is absolutely correct. And 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 maybe, you know, a lot of us walk around with the condition, um, the trait, and we don't know. Like yeah. myself and, and my wife, we did not know that we had this 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 issue. We were never diagnosed as children and, and so on. But when we got our second child, um, she was born and you know, it, uh, it, at, at 13 months, she was diagnosed and confirmed that she had beta thalassemia major, um, mm -hmm. and 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 you know that that definitely changed uh, our journey. It, it changed it into a different walk of, yeah. of sorts, you know. And I mean, I'm I'm very proud of you all for being able to to continue that walk and to support her and to do what you need to do to make sure you get it done. Um, Kieran, let me jump back across to you. I understand that we have a stand in solidarity happening tomorrow yes tell right. us about it so there's an initiative called bring tal to life that that was um an initiative of the, the international um the thalassemia international federation mm -hmm. right where they're inviting um o member organizations around the world to stand in solidarity with persons living with with thalassemia so um what one initiative that we're doing here is um we've written to the office of the prime minister Right, and we've gotten um, permission to have the the white white hall lit in red for, mm, for tomorrow. Okay. Right. So we're inviting persons to come come stand in front of white hall, take things off, take some photos mm -hmm. or, or wear red tomorrow and um um, post post us ta post tag us right uh, hashtag S I S B D T T hashtag share your red T T right um hashtag I T D 2020, 2024, right? Um, so, and is it is it is it meant to just bring awareness? Is that what we want out of it? 
It's, it's meant to bring awareness to, to stand with, with, with solar solidarity with, with persons who, around the world who live, who live with, with, with the condition, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, red, is, red is, is the color of blood, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and we also want to um, raise awareness of blood donation as well, right? Because um, that's a, a critical thing. Mm -hmm. These patients in, in particular can't live without a, a constant supply of blood, yeah. right? So yeah, uh, we, we definitely want to raise that awareness and, and and shed some more light on on the condition. Okay, so I want to I want to also make a call to more than just the the, the white hall. I, I know they have other buildings that constantly change their colors based on the season yes. and everything that's happening. And I, this morning, I really want yeah. to, to make a call to some of those buildings, some of those uh, corporate entities, to just join in the in the sharing, join in the solidarity, and also light up red tomorrow evening yes. as we we stand in solidarity and we bring yes. child to light. And we want to encourage each and every one of you if you happen to pass by somewhere, if you're wearing your red tomorrow, take your pictures and make sure that you. Share the awareness, and if you can give blood, please go out there and give blood because it's very, very so, essential so, to, to so life. A, Jason, uh, I hear yes, you. there's an opportunity. There. Sorry, there's an opportunity for persons to donate. We have a blood drive nice. this Saturday exactly. from eight to two at the uh, blood donation center in Port of Spain. Um, That's the blood bank. The blood yes. bank. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's from 8 to 2. You can actually register online through the society's um, portal on Facebook and Instagram. You can at SISBDTT, or you can also walk in on Saturday okay. between 8 to 2. Um, so that's that's part of the, the, the whole raising of awareness um, campaign that we're going on. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's just to touch on it a bit, um, the theme for this year is Empowering Lives, Embracing Progress, Equitable and, ac and Accessible Thalassemia Treatment for All. And that includes some of the things that Kieran mentioned, bone marrow transplants. Um, as you know, right now, we don't have a system because of the, the, the cost of it. Um, parents like myself and, 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 and others, um, we don't have that amount of finance to pay for that treatment and a cure it's 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 dubbed a cure um so there's there's bone marrow transplant and now you also have access to um gene therapy so that removes that 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 person who is ill out of the system yeah right because uh, they, jason, they they now have a cure I, yeah I, jason I, I have to ask uh, can you give us an approximate figure as to what this this treatment costs the gene therapy and the bone marrow transplant Right. So right now, they, we, um, Joanna, our daughter, has been accepted into an institution in Italy, which has one of the better ratings, but it's also one of the most affordable, and that is approximately 1.5 million TT. Um, we've seen gene therapy being offered um, in the U.S. for approximately a million U.S. dollars. Um so that's the range. It's wide ranging depending on where you go, but also what's more importantly, you have to look at the success rates of those um, institutions mm -hmm. across the number of patients that they would have treated and um, the number of patients they treated and the success of those procedures. Yeah. So different parts of the world um, would, would obviously be rated differently. Of course. And different um, facilities would be rated differently. And I well. imagine, I imagine that a lot of research would have to go into you deciding which facility you want to even apply to to get your daughter into. Yes, of of course, because you you know you would want the the, the, the best for your child. Any parent would want the best for their child, but and also you you want to be as realistic as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so that is why my wife and I. Um, with the assistance of Dr. Waveney Charles, who is now who, who's gone gone ahead, um, she would have been able to um, put us in connection with a facility in in Italy, and they would have um, vetted all of the information submitted to them and and accept Joan because it's not just having the money, but you also have to be considered a good candidate yeah. by the by the hospital. And um, Joanna was considered a, a good candidate, so we've we 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 now um, you know since 2019, 
trying to raise those funds and it's been very challenging. If people want to donate to the course, how can they? Well, we would have set up a GoFundMe page um, and we also have a bank account at First Citizens Bank. Um, so, And we also have social media, Facebook and Instagram, where they can look look up at Give the Cure Joanna, and they can have all the information there. At Give the Cure Joanna? Give to Cure. At Give to Cure Joanna. Give to Cure. Yeah. Give, give, G-I-V-E. G-I-V-E, Give to, to Cure yeah. Joanna. Yeah. All right, cure Joanna. I want to make sure right. we give have that clear. So, yeah, I want to make sure we have that clear so anybody who wants to, to head across and get more information or find out how they can donate, that they can do so. Because they say there's no price to life, but I think they're definitely, um, somebody's been telling me that there's a price. Yeah. So, uh, Jason, any closing words that you want to leave us with this morning? Yes, I just want to yeah, implore um, Trinidad and Tobago and, and whoever's listened to us um, worldwide to become a voluntary non remunerated blood um, donation, a donor. Um, because there are many people, you may even work with some of them, you may not know, require your blood um, to live natural just to live so i want to encourage everyone to go out donate blood come out this 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 saturday especially um and start that process if you've never donated blood contact the society we can you know share information that we have to bring a a, a, a higher level of understanding of the benefits to donating blood to the person the donor there are many health benefits as well yeah. So we, we just want to implore everyone to come out and support this society, support the work of, of what we're doing, and donate blood. Thank you so much, Jason. Kiran, closing comments before we go. Yeah, well, I, I fully endorse those things that, that, that Jason said. And we we definitely um, tried one of our major goals is to try to encourage more and more citizens of Trinidad and Tobago to become uh, voluntary blood donors. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just persons who live with um, blood disorders who, who need blood. Exactly. Right? You have cancer patients, persons um, in motor vehicle accidents, mm -hmm. persons who are victims of crime, etc. So blood is a highly demanded product. And mm -hmm. when there's a short supply, when you yourself find yourself in a position where you need blood, you may you may find you may find a challenge to get blood for yourself. Mm -hmm. So continue to donate blood, become a voluntary blood donor, because you may be helping yourself in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't, say, couldn't have said it any better. Uh, May the 8th is International Thalassemia Day, and we're lighting up the White Hall, but also on Saturday we are donating blood. There's a blood drive happening right in Port of Spain at the Blood Bank. You can absolutely just come down from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and be a part of it. Let me say thank you to the gentleman for joining me, and all the best uh, this coming week with the both events. Thank you for having us. Not a problem at all. We'll take a quick break and come back with more on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.